For my facility tour, I decided to travel to Gorham High School right here in Maine and take a look at the Gorham Athletic Field and the Athletic Complex as a whole. Right here, we're just looking at the rules that are stated about the Gorham Athletic Complex. Um, as you can see, there are some things that they prohibit and then also general use rules that they have listed so that everyone that enters the complex kind of understand what is expected of them when they're there. The first aspect of the Gorham Athletic Complex that I looked at was the baseball field. Considering this is a high school field, it looked like it was a field that is in really good condition, a really nice field to play on. Especially if you look at the grass, for this time of year it's, it's green, it looks pretty full, and then also the dirt was very smooth, very well kept. You can kind of see it here, home plate and the pitcher's mound were also really well taken care of with uh, weather covering so that it doesn't get too wet and destroyed. This picture puts on display the type of bleachers they have at the Gorham Athletic Complex. Even though it's a pretty basic model of the bleachers, there are a couple things that are in place to ensure the safety of the fans when they are using these bleachers. One of the obvious things is the fact that they have fencing on the sides and the back so that if any fans are sitting close to the edge of the bleacher, they don't have to worry about falling. These bleachers also have railings so that if it becomes wet or slippery or whatever it may be when they're maneuvering around the bleacher they don't have to worry about falling. On top of that they also have um, non-slip tape or grip tape to make sure that if it rains or there's any weather the bleachers don't become slippery and then they don't have to worry about any fans becoming injured as a result of the bleachers. This picture shows the home team's dugout. Um, as you can see also I'm pretty sure this is the press box as the framed in windows the re in the red. Um, are the areas where someone operating the scoreboard would sit up there doing stats, things such as that nature. This picture does a really nice job showing what I was talking about earlier in terms of keeping the field well kept. Um, there is a storm uh, cover for both home, home plate and the pitcher's mound, so this kind of just gives you an outward angle looking at the field as a whole. These next two pictures do a good job of showing the angle from the first baseline and the third baseline and what the field looks like from home plate in those angles. This picture right here shows you the scoreboard, again considering it's high school, pretty basic scoreboard, uh, pretty basic bleachers. This picture shows the back side of the home team's dugout. This building is where uh, storage and concessions is held. Considering this is a high school facility, that's pretty cool that they have a building uh, designated for concessions and storage considering my high school didn't necessarily have the same, or not to this degree. The next area I looked at was the soccer slash football field. This is a good picture of the scoreboard they have. They have a scoreboard on one end of the field and one scoreboard on the other end, so that the score is very visible. Um, in terms of the field, pretty, pretty basic grass field for Maine. They do have a track that surrounds the field. It's made out of tar slash concrete, which is kind of weird. But nonetheless, they do have one, so that's pretty cool. When you look at the stands, it's a pretty advanced setup considering it's a high school facility as well as they have lights, which is pretty cool because not many fields have lights. They also have a press box uh, for the soccer field as well, similar to the baseball field. But overall, when you're just looking at the field, it's, it's pretty basic for a high school soccer slash football field. The last part of the Gorham Athletic Complex that I looked at was the softball field, also known as Robbie Field. This sign is showing a list of donators that made the renovation of this field possible in 2003. This is a good picture of the away team's dugout. Overall, pretty basic dugout. does have some fencing to keep any foul balls or line drives or whatever um, away from the players so they don't get hurt. So that's a good feature. Again, same, same bleachers that they had at the baseball field um, with the fencing, the railing, the grip tape. So safety, safety precautions held. Unlike the baseball field, their press box is um, directly behind home plate. As you can see, it is also fenced to keep any foul balls or any miss hits away from anyone getting hurt. Um, and then you can also see in that picture the home team's dugout. These next couple of pictures give you different angles from the softball field as a whole. As you can see, one of the major differences between the softball field and the baseball field is that the infield of the softball field is completely dirt, whereas the baseball field had some grass. Also, the softball field is smaller, which is normal. Um, aside from that, you also get an opportunity to look at the home team dugout. Not much different from the away teams, but they have their names and their numbers and places to put their bats and bags, which is pretty cool. Again, there's also fencing in front of it to keep any foul balls or mishits 
away from the players to keep them safe. But overall, that's about it for the softball field. With that being said, that concludes the facility tour of the Gorham Athletic Complex. Thank you for watching.